Induction Technology of Knowledge Floater by SMS Elotherm GmbH Principles of Induction Induction heating falls within the category of direct electrothermal processes. That is, the heat is generated directly inside the material. In electrical engineering, this principle is known as induction. A definition. Electrical voltage is induced in the electrically conductive object until the influence of a magnetic alternating field and an electrical current is produced. This eddy current flows opposite to the original current. This causes joule heating of the object, as shown in the video. The benefits of induction heating include extremely high power densities, high heating rates, high electrical and thermal efficiencies, local power induction at selected points, and excellent process control. Applications for induction technology are heating for the purpose of forming by forging or rolling, heat treatment such as hardening or annealing, and joining such as welding or soldering. Significantly involved are the electrotechnical parameters. First of all, power density distribution. The power density is distributed within the conductive material and steadily drops from a maximum value at the surface as it moves toward the interior of the workpiece. This characteristic power distribution is described by the electrical resistance o. of the workpiece material, the magnetic permeability, Mu. and in particular by the frequency F. This electromagnetic penetration formula shows this context. In the figure, bottom left, the power density distribution of a metal cylinder is shown. Therefore, the current penetration depth depends directly on the material and frequency. In practice, it looks like this. If the material is to be heated throughout, for subsequent forging, for example, a correspondingly low frequency should be selected. If only surface heating is required, as is the case with induction surface hardening, a high frequency must be used. The skin effect is a characteristic of alternating currents, whereby only the surface of a conductor is used for conducting the electrons. Depending on the frequency, the flow of electrons is pushed to the outer skin of the conductor. Experts in the field use corresponding tables or graphs, such as the log-log graph shown here, to determine a required penetration depth. Following an example of graph, if the penetration depth of round material of austenitic steel should reach 3 millimeters, a frequency of 30 kilohertz has to be set. Calculations and graphs are also available for determining the through heating time. For example, the time required to reach a specific final temperature from a given starting temperature. Let us come now to some examples of manufacturing processes. Example 1 shows induction heating of billets for a subsequent closed die forging operation. A large production volume of automotive parts, more than 85%, is induction heated and forged at around 1,200 degrees Celsius. See also closed die forming floater. The diameter of the round or square material is usually between 20 and 120 millimeters. The cycle times are between 2 and 12 seconds, depending on the level of automation used. Material throughput ranges from 300 kilograms to 6 tons per hour. Following an induction heating plant for billets. The plant consists of heating inductors as well as material feeding and discharge systems. The substructure houses the power supply with mains input, power breakers, one or more frequency converters, and capacitors for power factor correction, as well as the plant control system and the cooling water system. In the video, you can see the spiral induction coil. By the way, the surface temperature of the heated semi-finished products 
is captured by an infrared camera. Any material which is too hot or too cold is discharged. The pyrometer is located at the exit of the line. Example 2. Induction reheating in rolling lines. Long or flat products made from steel can be fed in an integrated plant directly into the rolling mill from the continuous caster. The billets or slabs which are still hot are reheated in a continuous pass in the induction plant. The plant captures the temperature in the entry section and equalizes the surface and core temperature if required. This ensures the perfect rolling temperature is achieved. Example 3. Surface hardening of automotive components. Crankshafts in combustion engines are subject to high loads due to alternating torsional and bending stresses. This usually means the crankshafts need to be heat treated. With rotational hardening, the crankshaft is rotated at 30 to 60 revolutions per minute under the half-shell inductors. The pin and main bearings are brought to ostentinitizing temperature at the same reproducible depth. For the following quenching process, quenchant showers are integrated to ensure that a homogeneous martensitic microstructure is attained. On the left, a lab configuration for determining the correct surface hardening depth. Example 4. Quenching and tempering of tubes and bars. Induction heat treatment, quench and temper for short, is now the established process used for many components in the automotive industry, as well as in the field of oil and gas exploration. Typical dimensions for bars are up to 160 millimeters in diameter and 12 meters in length. A throughput of 10 tons per hour can be reached. The wall thickness of tubes can be up to 38 millimeters with outside diameters of up to 400 millimeters and lengths up to 14 meters. The throughput reaches up to 30 tons per hour. Advantages of quench and temper are high flexibility with small batch sizes, excellent homogeneity of material hardness and microstructure, and heat treatment without surface decarburization. Another important application of induction heating is longitudinally welding of tubes. Tubes made from steel strip are produced almost exclusively using high-frequency induction welding technology. With this pressure welding process, the strip to be welded is fed continuously from strip accumulators and roll formed into a tube. The material can then be heated at the weld using the concentrated current flow and then pressed together by squeeze rolls. The resulting burr is stripped off the outside and, if required, inside too. The so-called impeder concentrates the induction current flow within the tube shell. The dimensions range from 10 to 660 millimeters in diameter and wall thickness from 0 0.2 to 25.4 millimeters one inch by welding speeds up to 200 meters per minute. Let's have a closer look at the flow of current. The induced current flow travels along the open seam over the point of contact at the weld and heats it up continuously at high speed to the welding temperature. These structural pipes are applied in machine and vehicle construction, line pipe engineering, home appliances, and sporting goods, as well as in the furniture industry. Suitable materials are ferritic and austenitic steel, aluminum, copper, brass, and also zinc. Extrusion is a forming process for producing bars, wire rod, tubes, and various sections, some with very complex and intricate forms. Here, an aluminum billet is heated to a forming temperature of around 600 degrees Celsius and pressed through the extrusion die using a stem. 
The heating process for aluminum is divided into two sections, heating the billet to extrusion temperature and creating an axial temperature profile. Creating a specific temperature profile in the longitudinal direction of the billet is very effective, particularly when extruding aluminum, as additional heat is generated by the forming process. To compensate for this heat, multi-layer windings and heating zones are used in such a way that the extrusion process itself is isothermal.